When it comes to adding a pro level of detail to your shaders, one of the best ways to do that is to use some edge wear. You can see here I have these two models here. One, they're both kind of like this rubber coating, but one of them has some edge wear, and you can kind of see the um, galvanized orangey metal kind of at the bottom. And I think that looks a lot cooler. So I'm gonna show you step by step how we're gonna do this with some simple um, node setups here, just blending these two materials together. So if you wanna use your own object, go ahead. I'll start this tutorial by just quickly modeling a little example object so you guys can follow along, but I think this is really cool. And as always, I'll be uploading the final result to my Patreon, so you guys can check that out in the description below. And if you wanna sign up to Skillshare for free for one month, you can also use my link in the description and even follow some of my really cool character courses. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm just gonna make a quick little setup just to demonstrate. Now, if you have your own object ready to go, just skip ahead to where I start doing the um, shading. So I'm just gonna go add in a quick cylinder, tab into edit mode, and I'm gonna make a simple uh, mechanical looking component. That's all I wanna do here. It's just for the purposes of demonstrating how this um, works. But you could use your own object if you want. So just something really simple. Let's do something like this, and I might just make a few little um, columns here with little grooves in them just to kind of demonstrate the point here a little bit. Maybe something like that, and then a little thing here at the top. Once again, just purely for demonstrating. So let's go ahead and stick to this. I'm going to tab back out. I'm just gonna right click and go shade smooth and I'm gonna to go to my modifiers, just give that a bevel and get that bevel size uh, down a little bit and bump up the segments. Okay, and maybe even a subdivision surface modifier. Okay, so now we have something to work with. Let's go over to our render properties. Let's change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I'd recommend you use it. And uh, I'm gonna set my max samples here just to 90. Okay, so now we have something to work with. I'm just gonna go, while I'm here at my render, I'm just gonna go down to film and change it to transparent. I like to work like that. And maybe under my um, world properties here, I'm gonna go to my color and just give it a sky texture for now. HDRI would obviously be more advantageous. I'm just gonna go with that for now. I'm gonna press Z, I'm gonna go rendered. And here you can see I have a nice lighting setup. I might throw in just one area light here uh, just to really bring this home. So I'm gonna pop it over here. Maybe bring it up to 200, scale it up a little bit. You guys get the idea. So let's go over into our shading workspace and we're gonna select that object, we're gonna go new. And uh, for now, just to demonstrate, let's just go ahead and I'm gonna go into rendered view here. Let's just make two shaders. We're gonna have one over here, which is the principled. And we're just gonna take that principled, we're gonna go shift D to duplicate it. So one over here will just be our, um, let's just make that our paint. Material, that'll be the outside surface that gets scratched off. And this one here, we'll just make it kind of like an orange material. Let's plug it in here. And let's make that metallic like that and bring the roughness down. So now we have these two things. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A, search and just get a mix shader. Over here, we're gonna plug it over here. And let's just plug both of these into here. And now it's getting them mixed 50-50, um, or you can take it all the way over to one or the other with this value slider. Now the problem is, we want to distribute this in a way that shows edge wear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and now set that up. So let's give ourselves some space to work with. For now, I'm just gonna go out of my rendered and go into solid. I'm gonna go shift A, search and get a bevel. I'm gonna grab the bevel node and place it over here and we're gonna take it and duplicate it. So we now have two bevel nodes. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the radius of one and set it to 0 0.01, and the other one we're gonna set to 0 0.08. Now the thing here is we're gonna use the radius here, to, so it's gonna be the difference between the radius, that's gonna give us um, kind of like the size or scale of our edge wear. So let's now blend these two together. So we're gonna do that via a mix RGB. Now, if you're using something like Blender 3.4 um, or something like that, you're, you're gonna have to go search and go mix RGB. I'm using Blender 3.5, so you're gonna have to go Shift A now, go over to color and use the new mix color node instead. You're not gonna find the mix RGB anymore, but it does the same thing. So we're gonna plug these two into A and B, and let's visualize this. So we're gonna go Z, I'm gonna go rendered, and I'm just gonna preview this by plugging it into the surface here. 
And you can see this is what we have. But what we want to do is we want to take this factor all the way up to one. And we want to come to our mix here and we actually want to change that to the difference. Now it's going to use the difference between these two here. And that's giving us a scale. And I'll quickly show you here. In fact, if I just demonstrate by coming here to this radius, um, the bottom one here is quite low, but if I take the top one and make it like 0 0.05, all of a sudden you can see this gets a lot tighter. You could even set this to zero. I prefer just to have some sort of value here. But we can take this now into a black and white by going Shift A, search, and let's get a color ramp. Always works well. Place it over here, and now we turn this into black and white. And by bringing these uh, sliders together, we can really clamp these values closer together and make it a little bit more pronounced. So I'm going to go with something like this for now. In fact, I'm going to have to black way down here and really bring that down. Now, this is pretty much already done. We can now take this and we can take the color ramp output here and plug it into the factor of this mix shader that's our two principal shaders are going into. And we can plug the shader output into the surface of our material output. Now you can see this is what we have. We now have um, this edge wear here which is really cool, but we can make it look even better. So for now, I'm just gonna quickly add in a camera just so I can at least focus on a spot. Um, maybe something like this. Okay, so there we go. But we can do this even better by adding some details. So how are we gonna do this? We're gonna do that by randomizing one of the radii. So in this case, I'm gonna take the top radius. I'm gonna click and drag on it. And I'm gonna type in noise and get a noise texture. And I'm gonna go Shift A, search and get a color ramp place it over here. Now for now, let's just look at the color ramp here. So I've got the color ramp, I'm using the node wrangler, so I've got that plugged into the surface of my material output just to preview it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come here to the color um, ramp here, I'm gonna just bring these two values together until I get a little bit more contrast in here. I might just flip them around like this, there you go. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come here to the detail and make that something like 15, I think works well. And then let's take the roughness and increase that all the way. And now we have this. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna um, bring these values a little bit closer to each other, just so we have something more like this. I might decrease the scale a little bit to something like 12, just to make it a little bit more fine. Yeah, there we go, that looks good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this color ramp, make sure it's plugged into the radius of the top bevel, and let's feed our mix shader back into the surface. And now you can see this is what we have. But the problem is it's kind of blending everywhere. So we need to refine this a little bit more. So we're going to come here to the noise and the color ramp. We're going to move them over. And then we're going to go Shift A search. We're going to get a map range. I'm going to plug it over here. And now we're going to come here to the max over here. And let's set that to 0 0.05. And we're going to gradually go up. So let's go 0.1. I might go with 0.5. Just till we start to see this get to where it's working a little bit better for us. And what you may have to do as well is come here to your color ramp, just adjusting it ever so slightly till I think it looks a lot better. And once again, messing around with the map range value here. And I think something like that looks quite cool. So now we have some nice texture to our edge wear. So let's quickly make this look even cooler by coming here to our two principal shaders. And let's go to our first principal shader, which is the outside material. Let's go Shift A, searches, get a noise texture. Let's plug the color into the roughness. Shift A search. Let's get a color ramp node and place it over here. Let's just bring these two values together like that. And let's just drag up the scale and increase the detail and the roughness as well. And let's just go get a bump node. Let's just plug the color into the height here and plug the normal into the normal here. And let's bring the strength down to 0.2. And now you can see we have this nice texture here. I'm also gonna just bring, take the color here and just change it a little bit to a lighter value. And I'm also gonna take the speckler down a bit. And I might just also go over to my base color here for the base material. And I might just make it a little bit um, less saturated. And I think that looks pretty cool. So that is how you can add um, a really pro level to your shaders by adding some edge wear. Now there are a lot of ways you can make this a lot more realistic by using some scratchy textures and stuff like that. But this is the simplest procedural way you can possibly do it, I think. And it looks pretty good. So um, what I'm gonna do, just to really demonstrate this to you guys, let's just duplicate this object here and put another one next to it. And let's just come here and select 
our principal shader here that has a dark outer coating. Let's just press Control C to copy it. And uh, let's just go and get rid of this material, go new. Let's just paste it in here. And let's just drag that into the surface. And now we have these two next to each other. So you can see this is the difference it makes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this and just give this a quick test render. And there we have it. We now have a material that looks a lot more worn, a lot more uh, lived in, like it's been used, just by adding this nice edge wear. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and that you're able to take something away from it. I will be uploading this shader setup here to my Patreon, so you guys can check that out in the description below, and I'll see you next time.